It's time for Real Talk with Brian and Dan, the weekly talk radio show dedicated to discussing important real estate topics, plus insight into the local community. With a combined experience of over 50 years as local real estate brokers from the Eastside Real Estate Team at Keller Williams Realty Bellevue. Here's your hosts, Brian Levitt and Dan Edwards. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 KKNW. It is Wednesday, March 11th, 2020, and it is surreal. There are some weird times going on right now. Um, But we are glad you're listening because here's the thing. We don't have to come in contact with each other, so don't put your ear too close to the radio. It may transmit some uh, goodness. (laughs) Only good stuff, right? All the good stuff. Puppies. Puppies. (laughs) Now, if you are interested, we are uh, broadcasting live on YouTube. You can just go Google, uh, let's see, KKNW, um, 1150 KKNW, and you can watch us live there. You can also listen to us on uh, podcasts, anywhere podcasts are uh, podcasted, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And finally, uh, you can uh, view past episodes on our website, the eastsiderealestateteam.com. Just go there and you'll see a whole bunch of uh, our past allied resources, and real estate tips. But we're glad you're listening to our show today. I'm really excited to talk real estate. We have some fantastic guests. Today we're welcoming back Angel Barna of Troth & Company. And we and today we have Aya Mears with Kango Kuma & Associates. But before we get to our guests, let's start out with some real talk. I thought we'd bring it down a little bit, just kind of <laughs> settle everyone's nerves. Right? A little Bob Marley, a little... Those of you watching in the future, because we take that out, you won't know, but that was don't worry about a thing. So here is our coronavirus special edition. Brian, we're talking a real estate market oh, in the current are. conditions. We've been talking about such a red hot market. What's going on now and how is oh, coronavirus my. affecting? Well, you know, before we go there, I just got a little comment last night uh, listening to my son, one of his friends chatting about the Chinese virus. Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah, do don't go there. Yeah. That's that's not okay. Yeah. And he says, fine, we'll call it Kung Flu. <laughs> so do we have a rim, you know, <laughs> on that. Yeah. Yeah. Bad so bad. anyway, <laughs> um, real estate market, you know, with all the stuff going on now, the school closures, the social distancing, all that, I was curious this weekend how it impact the new listings that we mentioned last week. Right. We were flooded at our open houses over the weekend. We had nine offers. And we're in contract way over list. And it's just, it's the hottest real estate market I've ever seen. Yeah. Last week's interest rates um, really, um, I think it really motivated even that stitch of individuals that were like, well, I'm just going to kind of wait this out because that was once in a lifetime. I hear the rates and we'll talk with uh, Michael Burdick. They've kind of bounced to back up a little bit. A little bit. I think they're going to be softening again. And part of it, you know, Michael can expand on this, but the relationship between the bond market and the... Um, interest rates, the Fed rate is is more closely tied than the Fed rate and mortgage interest rates. Yeah. The relationship is an inverse relationship. Uh, but, you know, I think one of the issues right now is when you're watching the stock market, it's a uh, lack of confidence. But consumer confidence in housing is extremely high. I think in other areas, there's a little right. bit of trembling going on. Well, it's always been the case that you see when, when the stock market hits its level of volatility, that investors are looking for something that's tangible and secure. Right. And real estate is it. Yeah, a lot of money coming into uh, income uh, real estate right now. So uh, as far as your open house, how did you process uh, that? What is it called? Social distancing? distancing? Yeah, we just, you know, as a, um, gosh, shaking hands as part of the business and just right. saying, hey, uh, you know, a little foot bump. Because even the elbow oh. bump, they're saying, hey, uh, if you're going to sneeze, sneeze in your elbow. Yeah. So we'll pass on that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, or a bow, polite bow. Or right. I saw a couple people who put their hand over their heart and it's like bow and it's like, just being respectful to people. Yeah. But it's like a little different to, to walk away from the customary handshake, but just keeping a little distance. And then, of course, hand washing. Have you noticed people are a little bit more communicative now? I haven't really noticed a change. You haven't noticed that? I, I tell you, one thing I like is I'm not sitting in traffic jams. Well, that's true. People aren't out and about. Getting out to see homes is a little bit easier. Um, one of the things that I started to do, and I've done this for some time, is individuals that are relocating to the area is giving them a sh- show of homes. Well, it's easy for us to take out uh, FaceTime, right, and do a full right. tour of a property. Right. And that way you're not concerned about spreading the virus. Mm-hmm. Um, we bring um, hand sanitizer, right, to all the yeah. open houses so people coming through can kind of um, mm-hmm. make sure they're staying clean. Yeah. One of our competitors was touting that they will do a virtual walkthrough of a home 
as like it's a new thing. We've been doing that for years. <laughs> I'll have out of town buyers, yeah, and I'll walk through and FaceTime a house, yeah. And um, um, I've sold several that way where my client has seen it, uh, you know, online and never actually walked it. Yeah, I wonder if the day will come where that's uh, like a regular thing. And yeah. I, I think that. The, I always believe in use, utilizing technology to provide more information, more right. ability to make a decision rather than just kind of uh, as a cool tool. Yeah. But um, I've, I've, I mean, what better way to know what the backyard is like without running out to yeah. see a house than to just do a walkthrough video? I can actually record two minutes tops and while in my car, you know, go into the car upload it to YouTube and share a private link to my right. sellers and that takes less than five minutes. And see, doing it real time, like the FaceTime, I've done that because the client can say, hey, give me a close up yeah, on what the about kitchen that? cabinets. I want to see that closer. Can you can you open that door for me? Because we're talking while I'm walking through and it's it's uh, a lot better than a, I guess it is a form of a virtual tour. But So, uh, so a lot of sellers are saying, hey, I think I kind of want to wait uh, to put my home on the market uh, until everything settles down. Yeah. The problem with that is we don't know what the market's going to be. I got, I got one that just said, hey, we're going to wait till a year from now. And it's like, okay, fine. Hope the market's good. It, there's no indicator that it wouldn't be. But, you know, here we're in the midst of a financial, uh, potential financial financial change, uh, change big one. Yeah. So we don't know what the market's going to be. We know what it is today. And you've heard me say this a hundred times. There's never been a better time to buy. Right. Well, there's never been a better time to sell. Yeah. And we're seeing some people doing some profit taking, selling now, moving into an apartment while they're, uh, you know, uh, selling while the selling's good. And that's not altogether a bad idea if you're at a time in your life where you're going to be transitioning anyway. Planning a move, um, that's not a terrible idea. Yeah, we also had our friend Steve Chater, who's a longtime real estate agent, and he's an investor out of Arizona. And we were talking, I was talking to another client, not him, but his comment is relevant. Um, we're just kind of, he's like, every time I've bought a house, I've I've lost money. And and it's interesting. You don't lose houses when you buy, buy them. You lose when you sell. And I think that's an well, important... It's an important consideration because it shouldn't be something that you make a decision on based on whether you're going to win or lose. You're making what's the best decision for your family. Right. And, um, you know, I think sometimes people sell in fear. And right. so I'm not asking for any listings in fear right now. I don't think nope. you need to do anything. But I am saying that um, if you're going to make your decision based on emotion, it's not a good thing. So make make it if you already made a decision of wanting to be in Arizona or relocate or, or get a bigger home. There's some great opportunity right now. There are. Don't just don't just change based on fear of the unknown. It's really unknown. We don't know what's going to happen over the next three to four to five months. Nope, you don't. You know, uh, kind of going back to a comment you made about you know when you make or don't make money. When I was brand new in the business decades ago, uh, I was at a real estate conference and cornered one of the uh, East Side's big investors, a big big shot, and uh, I was almost a little afraid to talk mm -hmm. to him, but I. In my uh, naivete, I asked him, what's your secret to success? And he told me. And it's like, wow. And what he said. I was going to uh, say, are you going to share it with yeah, us? Yeah, I am. Oh, I am okay. going to share. <laughs> Basil Vesey. I don't know if anybody remembers Basil Vesey. Oh, yeah. Asked, mayor, rest right? his soul. No, he was an investor developer. Oh, okay. And he told me, he says, look, you don't make money when you sell real estate. You make money when you buy real estate. There you go. So making a good buying decision, you know, in the right location, um, that's where you make your money. And then uh, you... You collect the money when you sell, but you make it when you buy. If you have questions about buying or selling in this market, please give us a call. You can reach us at 425-200-4093. Um, I think there's option one, option two to buy or sell. We're happy to answer all your questions. And that concludes our Real Talk segment for today. If you're interested in this and other topics that we've covered on our Real Talk segment, please check out our blog at the eastsiderealestateteam.com slash blog. And again, you can call us directly at 425-200-4093. Coming up next, we'll be speaking with our lender for our Mortgage Moment segment. After this commercial break, we'll hear from Michael Burdick, an experienced loan consultant with Loan Depot. More Real Talk right after this break. Did you know when you pay rent, you're actually paying someone else's mortgage? Are you tired of missing out on owning your own home? Fact, homeowners on average have 40 times the financial net worth 
of renters. The Eastside Real Estate Team has been helping many first-time home buyers find and buy their first home. They specialize in customer service and put you first. They listen first to what you're looking for and then they take the time to make sure their clients understand every aspect of the home buying process. If owning a home has been your dream, the Eastside Real Estate Team can help you. For a free, no hassle consultation, call 425 200 4093 or find them online at the Eastside Real Estate Team.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Do you want to hold on to a property but don't have the time or knowledge to manage a tenant? The solution is Brink Property Management. They can take care of this for you so you can relax. Why us? We attract and retain the most experienced property managers in the region with over 23 years serving the local rental market. For more information, contact 425-458-4848 or visit www.brinkpm.com. Is navigating your healthcare options challenging? Angel Barna with Troth & Company helps businesses and Medicare-eligible individuals navigate often complex healthcare options. Let us be your partner in healthcare planning. As a broker, we are your advocate and work for you. Get non-biased, straightforward options by calling 425-616-2867. Troth & Company, your partner in healthcare planning. 425-616-2867. Wherever you go, Alternative Talk 1150 is here for you. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Real Talk with Brian and Dan. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. And it's now time for our Mortgage Moment segment. And during this segment, we are going to talk about the current market, what's going on, what the heck is going on in the mortgage market. And joining us today is our local mortgage expert with Loan Depot, Michael Burdick. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I know you're super busy, and I appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your busy schedule. So, Michael, what's driving the rates down? What's happening? Well, you know, when, when the stock market goes down and there's volatility in the market, um, you know, that's unfortunately it affects a lot of a lot of people, you know, it affects their businesses, it affects their margins, their their profits, but it, it also does bring mortgage rates down. So what we're seeing is a combination of stocks, the losses those are taking, the coronavirus, election year all kind of this perfect storm which is pushing mortgage rates down so they're about one and a quarter percent lower than they were at this time last year one one and a quarter that's insane that's big so what other factors are contributing to uh the the rate volatility because i know uh we were down below three last thursday and now it's back up so what's what's contributing to the volatility there so i mean it's Kind of an interesting crisis that's, that's happening right now and and there's a lot of demand for refinances because like i said if you closed last year you possibly could be in the mid fours and now getting a rate in the mid threes or even lower if you were one of the lucky ones last week there's just an unprecedented demand for refine and banks credit unions mortgage companies like us there's only so much liquidity and, and dollars to to lend out um our CEO had a, a really interesting uh, discussion on Fox News this week about, you know, money, just like he was told by his parents, money doesn't grow on trees. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the liquidity has mm -hmm. to be there. And I think it's just a capacity issue that the industry is dealing with right now. So that's also going to maybe, you know, push rates up and down in directions that we might not usually see happen when we follow the other indicators like bond market and stock market. So did you hear that, Brian, that they actually had a had the rate stop because right. of, what did you call it, Michael, yesterday? Capacity. Capacity. And, and, uh, yeah. yeah, just the, the They couldn't do the loans. How much. Right. So they raised the yeah. rates because they had so Good. many people going in there. Closed down the pipeline. Yep. Yep. That's crazy. So grab your crystal ball for us for a second and tell us where you see rates going in the future. Well, you know, it, Last week, I was told more people to walk because we have seen a couple of fluctuations up, and those were the best rates we've seen in, in my career of 10 years. And, you know, with all the volatility that we're currently seeing with the election year, with coronavirus that's, that's looming, I don't think rates can go up, uh, you know, 
anytime soon. I, so, I don't know yeah. if they'll dip down as good as they were last week, but I think maybe last, that was the floor for our industry. I don't know. Um, but I think kind of where we're at now in the mid threes, depending on your situation, is a good spot for, for rates to be at. Yeah, so I would say if you're out there and you're thinking about it or either a refinance or a purchase, get your information ready so that you're ready to lock once you either A, find the property, or B, find the rate that you want associated with the time uh, of refinance. So, Michael, how do our listeners get a hold of you? They can Google Michael Burdick, Loan Depot out of Bellevue. Best number for me is 206-661-2289. Call me anytime, 24-7. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Next up after the break, we will have Angel Barna, our good friend Angel Barna of Troth & Company, who will be discussing with us about obtaining insurance in the time of crisis. Please come on back after this short break. Not sure if now is the right time to sell? Worried you missed the market? The East Side Real Estate Team specializes in helping homeowners maximize their equity when selling. With our proven premier listing service, our clients have sold their homes for more money in less time than the competition. We know you have many choices when working with a real estate agent, but with the Eastside Real Estate Team, you get a team of highly qualified, experienced agents. From staging to deciding if your property is market ready for top dollar, if you're considering selling, call the Eastside Real Estate Team at 425 425- 200-4093 or check out our website at the Eastside Real Estate Team.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Are you wearing too many hats in your small business? Finding yourself wondering where the time went? Do you ever get frustrated with technology that should just work? Then you need nerds to go. America's small business IT department. 425-800-NERD. At nerds to go we provide friendly, professional, and reasonably priced solutions for small business owners. From network troubleshooting to hardware repair or training, let nerds to go be your IT department. Call nerds Nerds to go today. We'll come to you. 425-800-NERD. That's 425-800-NERD. Is navigating your healthcare options challenging? Angel Barna with Troth & Company helps businesses and Medicare eligible individuals navigate often complex healthcare options. Let us be your partner in healthcare planning. As a broker, we are your advocate and work for you. Get non-biased, straightforward options by calling 425-616-2867. Troth & Company, your partner in healthcare planning. 425-616-2867. Find out the latest about your favorite shows on Alternative Talk 1150. Check out 1150kknw.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 KKNW. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. And our first guest today is Angel Barna of Troth & Company. Angel is a healthcare insurance broker who brings over 10 years of insurance expertise to all our clients. Having helped hundreds of businesses and individuals over the years, Angel empowers business owners, Medicare beneficiaries, and individuals to navigate the highly confusing, I'm just saying, this is ad-libbing here, and rough waters of healthcare. She takes her clients from a place of confusion to confidence and understanding. By taking the time to personally understand each client's individual needs, she tailors options and solutions that meet both their goals and budget. Angel's first and foremost a proud mom of two kids and is no longer a dog lover because her dog ate her glasses. (laughs) I mean, she still loves the dog, I'm sure. How could you not? It's such an adorable face, yeah. Uh, But in her spare time, she enjoys watching her daughter compete. Doing what? Competing what? She's actually benched right now due to a back injury. No, yeah. not gonna benched. Benched from what? Compete. Uh, soccer and soccer. Oh, wow. kickboxing. And soccer and kickboxing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, but also not watching her daughter compete. Flower gardening. Flower gardening is something you like to do, and spending time with uh, in, in Westport with her kids and parents crabbing and beachcombing. Welcome back to the show, Angel. Thank you. Thanks so, for having um, me. when is the crabbing season? Do you guys know? It's open all year there. It's best in the wintertime, though. Is oh, yeah. is that Thanksgiving right? was the best for us. Wow. Ah, so. that's when the crabs are coming in or something? I don't know if the crabs were coming in or no one else was down there, <laughs> but um, yeah, we caught Reggie, the big, the big, big crab. We oh, wow. How, season, so. how big? I don't even like remember. I have a picture of him. He was huge. He big was, Dungeness? Yeah. You named yeah. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Only the big ones get names. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then you eat them. Hmm. Oh, yeah. How quaint. Wow. Right. It's awful. It's awful. <laughs> but tasty. All right. Tasty. So <laughs> since since we're familiar with you, we know about your hobbies and interests, and uh, we have your fond memory. Do you want I mean, you just shared one there, right? Crabbing with your kids. <laughs> so let's get right down to brass tacks. All right. Coronavirus on everyone's mind. You cannot avoid it. I actually put a moratorium in our office. Said, no more coronavirus conversations or I'm going to flip my stuff. Yeah, we're just talking about puppies and puppies. Good stuff. Let's talk about happiness, yeah. uh, the lack of traffic, the fact that we're saving the planet by less emissions because cars aren't going yeah. to see the good side. There's some half, good. The half full beer. Yes. So. Let's talk about the health care, though. You want to talk about the panic mm-hmm. side of it. Yeah. Well, let's clean it up. Okay. If you have concerns, those who don't have health care, what, can, what can they do? Right. So Washington State has just opened up a special enrollment period. Um, mm. So if you did not purchase insurance and you are an individual, you can now purchase insurance. It'll be an April 1st effective date, and you actually have until April 8th to sign up. So, so we, we have next. open enrollment again mm-hmm. nice. for the individual market. So this is going to apply to people who have um, no health coverage in place right now. It doesn't matter if you're employed or not. If your employer doesn't offer health insurance or if you opted out of the health insurance or if um, you just decided I'm healthy, I'm going to take a, a chance. I think it's heavily weighing on people's minds now that health insurance is a great idea. Just Why is that place. such a big deal that there's open enrollment? Can't you just always enroll? Not anymore, not with the Affordable Care Act. There's now um, an annual open enrollment for individuals. So there's a set time that you can make your elections and pick out a health care plan. The idea is that um, you don't have people purchasing health insurance when they need it and then canceling it when they don't need it, right? Right, right. So it's hard on the whole whole system. So so if someone were to um, need to find out information now, they email you or a call? What's the best? Feel free to give me a call or email, whatever's... Whatever's easiest. Okay. Hmm. So if you're employed um, and your employer doesn't offer, you're eligible in the open enrollment period. Is that right? Okay. So here's the nice thing about group health insurance is that there is no open enrollment period. Oh, okay. You can start a plan any time of the year. Hmm. So um, you can change plans any time of the year. These carriers are happy to do deductible crediting. So if you don't love your plan, you're truly not stuck with it. And I think we're, we're in a crucial time where employees are now going to be demanding health care insurance. I think um, with this crisis, I think it's going to bring forward even more of a demand to have this benefit. Um, for, from, your, for your workforce. Yeah, for your I mean, workforce. One of the things that Brian and I didn't talk about in the opening segment was there's still a really strong underlying workforce, right? It's unemployment. And who knows? That could change very much. But one of the ways that, um, that employers can entice their um, – their, you know, recruits mm-hmm. to offer benefits. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is you can write benefits for companies yep. so that they can entice employees? Yes. Yeah, and it's such a competitive job market here. I think I read that the mm. unemployment was 3.3% in Washington right now. So if you're trying to attract and retain good employees and you don't have a health insurance plan, you're going to want to visit that. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And every year there's new set of options um, but now you're saying as a business, you don't have to wait for the open enrollment. You can just go ahead and start this now, and your employees at any time can add or subtract it. Yeah, there are no open enrollment periods for businesses. Okay. So you can start hmm. a plan any time of the year. Your employees have an opportunity to um, come on when you start your plan. If they waive, then they have to wait until the next open enrollment, hmm. um, unless they lost coverage for some reason, like uh, they got kicked off their parents' plan or their spouse got laid off, and that's who they were covered on then they can hop onto your plan. But the carriers have been great in the small group market. They're allowing um, employers that have 51 and fewer employees to have multiple plans. Um, One of my carriers even now allows you to do an HMO plan and a PPO plan. So they're really really diving into the small group market and offering them great options right now. All right, so um, let's see. What kind of health care options do you provide for business? I work with the top carriers in Washington, so I do um, I do the group health insurance benefits, so medical, dental, vision. Um, also, another popular option right now is supplemental or voluntary benefits. This allows employees to pick and choose um, policies based on what their needs are. If you have a history of cancer, or, you know, if you never picked up life insurance, um, 
uh, chronic health issues, if you have a history of family um, heart disease, you have the opportunity to pick up some extra coverage for that. Disability, paycheck insurance, all these benefits are can be voluntary. They're going to do a couple things for you. They're going to help your employees have a little more control in their health care spending. It's also going to allow them to pick and choose the coverage that's perfect for them. And it's going to lower payroll taxes. In addition, many of these policies are pre-tax, so it's going to save the employer on payroll taxes too, which is oh. nice. Wow. Okay, so as an employer, how, how big or, or how small of an employer do I need to be to provide this kind of product to our, our employees? So group health insurance plans, you can do it with one employee. Um, for the supplemental benefits, typically you need to have at least five employees. Five, okay. Mm -hmm. So then what you do as an employer is you, you create the baseline, and then you have like an entree of services that the individual could say, hey, I'd like to add that, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. And then it gets deducted from their paycheck, and then they have that coverage. Yes. And you handle all the, all the ins and outs of that. Yes. That's cool. That's great. It is. That is really great. So I think of like supplemental, like, you know, uh, uh, some of the companies out there, I guess I don't, I don't know if I want to mention names. <laughs> the duck, the <laughs> duck, duck or the, yeah. the yeah. duck guys. Is it yeah. a duck or a goose? goose? I don't know. I think it's a duck. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Companies but, like that. Um, yeah. But they're five or is that individual? So some of those companies will allow you to do in individual voluntary. Um, typically you'll get a better rate if you do group. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of group carriers that are not voluntary that have great benefits as well. Um, you know, and, and a blend, like you could do MetLife and Hartford. They've got great options that are voluntary and employer paid. So hmm. there's okay. tons of. Tons of options. That's yeah. the part that I think is the most overwhelming is after, huh. uh, yeah. you know, you just kind of start going, ah, uh, and then PPO and then, ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't exactly. know where to start. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It's hard. You need well, to have somebody that's in that zone. You probably know this, but after meeting Angel on the show, uh, my wife and I met with her and she walked us through everything. Just a fabulous job. Yeah. Because I just get lost in all that. Yeah. You're an expert. You know it inside yeah. and out. That was one of the most helpful things we've done with our insurance. So just really have appreciated working with you. Thank so. you. So another area you specialize in is Medicare. Yeah. And um, how do you see this whole virus impacting the Medicare market? Yeah, it's funny. We, you know, we were talking earlier. Um, a lot of my appointments have canceled. Um, you know, due to the coronavirus fears, and yep. my Medicare clients haven't canceled at all. <laughs> no, is that no. fear They're motivated? Like, no, I had one say, oh, no, we've seen worse. Come on out. Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, so far, knock on wood, no complaints. Um, and the Medicare market seems to be the steady eddy of the medical field is really in terms of insurance. Yeah. Um, so, so far, I'm um, knock on wood. I know this is kind of the, the population that's getting the most impacted. By so the they want to make sure they're covered. They want to make sure they're covered. Um, however... Medicare is structured so that it's easy to get coverage. The plans are great. You can get zero premium plans that have amazing benefits. Hmm. So I think the interesting part is um, I see this whole thing as changing how we do business in a really good way. Um, if there are right. less cars on the street, right, for sales calls, for, mm -hmm. you know, okay, going to the factory was a thing. We don't do that anymore. We work on our computers and we have milestones and we have you know, mm -hmm. uh, benchmarks that we have to meet for certain jobs. Brian and I have to drive, right? We have yeah. to get get places in order to look at physical inventory. But um, for you, have you looked into getting that Zoom right conference call and, <laughs> and sit down with the business and say, hey, schedule a conference call. We'll do face-to-face. Yeah. -face. I can walk you through. Because looking at these plans, when, when, I, when you hand me a piece of paper of it, it's like, ah. But if you popped it up on the screen and I was able to kind of compare – that would be fantastic. Have you embraced that for your practice? Actually, most all of my practice is that way. Um, oh, wow. Very few of my uh, group employers do I meet with. Most all of it's done online and over the phone. Hmm. Wow. Um, Medicare, I, you know, I have 96 plans in King County, 10 carriers. Medicare is typically easier to sit down and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Hmm. Yep. Um, I do have a few that prefer to do an online appointment, like a Join Me or a WebEx. I'm happy to do that as well. Yeah. So moving forward, I think we'll see more of that in the future. I do too. And I, I even think that like Brian and I discussed is incorporating that into our business. Uh, let's see, tonight at seven o'clock, I have a buyer's meeting and it's online. Wow. Yeah. We're just That's hopping great. online and we're going to go over the, the stuff. So it's cool. We Very never cool. have to even interact with each other, Brian, physically. <laughs> <laughs> For you introverts oh, there you out go. there, I know you're yeah. super excited about that. <laughs> That's <funny>. Finally. <laughs> so how many Medicare options did you say in, in 96 plans, um, 10 County? carriers in King County alone. Wow, how do you yeah. keep up with that? 
Um, it's a lot of work. It that. takes me forever every year to do mm. the certifications. And they're all different. They're all different. Yeah, they're all different. And you got to be certified for them. You have to be certified for each carrier. Otherwise, you can't sell them. Nope. Yeah. You got to do the federal certification and the carriers. And yeah, Whoa. they're great plans though. Um, and there truly is a plan for everybody. And there's zero premium plans. There's Cadillac plans. There's so many options. So we have a little time for a success story, and I'm putting you on the spot. But can you share with our listeners uh, a success story that you had recently? Uh, given the current environment, how you really came through? Yeah, you know, um, they're all success stories. Um, but, you know, I just met with a gentleman yesterday whose wife has um, just suddenly lost her position at work. And it's a hardship, right? Because Cobra, for their family of four, is $2,400 a month. Mm. Wow. Yeah, oh. that's that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. that's a lot. And so, fortunately, you know, he is at an age where he could do Medicare. And so set him up with um, a supplement plan and um, his it saves him a thousand dollars a month off of that cobra oh that's great and that's you know that's a win that's, that's, yeah, that's it was one. an unplanned event you know um, good or bad I think the jury's still out on that but it was yeah. one of those moments it was like <gasps> you know we what are we gonna do yeah that's they right. weren't there yet they weren't ready to retire mm. they weren't you know so then I can imagine um, you know I think when when you get to that spot where Medicare is available you get a mailbox full of yeah. stuff right? yes and uh, kind of trying to weave through how to make that have the most impact without paying through the nose yeah. or grabbing stuff you don't need yeah. and, and it all stuff. looks so official when you get it too it looks right. pressing and urgent and yeah. fancy and yeah there's a lot that and comes confusing in. yeah <laughs> it muddies the water for sure yeah well, um, anything else you have for our listeners? Uh, how do they get a hold of you? Um, yes. How, it, with the open enrollment, or if you're if you own a business and you want to keep and, and retain employees, how do our listeners get in touch with you? Yes, you can ring me at my office line. Um, it's 425-616-2867. She's here in the studio, so give her a second before you call. <laughs> or what's the... Hey, the ringer's off. <laughs> what, yeah, what's yeah. the email? Uh, you can email me at angel at troth and company. It's A N G E L at t r o t h a n d c o dot com. Awesome, perfect. Thank you so much for coming in again today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really timely. I appreciate it. After the break, we're going to be talking with Aya Mears with Kango Kuma and Associates, who will be discussing the relationship between architecture and real estate. Join us right after this break. Did you know when you pay rent, you're actually paying someone else's mortgage? Are you tired of missing out on owning your own home? Fact, homeowners on average have 40 times the financial net worth of renters. The Eastside Real Estate Team has been helping many first-time home buyers find and buy their first home. They specialize in customer service and put you first. They listen first to what you're looking for and then they take the time to make sure their clients understand every aspect of the home buying process. If owning a home has been your dream, the Eastside Real Estate Team can help you. For a free, no hassle consultation, call 425-200-4093 or find them online at the Eastside Real Estate Team .com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Do you think having potential is a compliment or insult? Jedediah Collins and Rookie to Veteran empowers people to eliminate the gap between potentially achieving your goals and taking the actions to achieve success. Rookie to Veteran takes pride in translating the behaviors of the best in the world to your everyday life. Jedediah has empowered thousands of people to start capturing their dream. For more information, visit JedediahCollins.com or for financial freedom, follow Jedediah Collins' YouTube channel. Are you tired of failing at your New Year's resolutions? PJ helps you reach your health and fitness goals faster and with less willpower required through the use of his time-saving exercise methodology, brain rewiring techniques, and habit hacks. PJ has helped thousands of people over the last three decades through X-Gym, blogging, his book, online training, his exercise app, YouTube, online courses, workshops, public and corporate talks, and personal coaching. For more information, contact him at pj at xgym.com. Seattle, Tacoma, Antwerp? That's right. We're streamed worldwide on our app and on the web at 1150kknw.com.
Welcome back to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 AM KKNW. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. Our next guest is Aya Mears of Kengo Kuma and Associates. Aya graduated from Cornell University in 2018 with a Bachelor of Architecture. After graduating, Aya was a junior faculty member in the Department of Architecture at her school for the first year design studio and is most recently working at Kengo Kuma's office in Tokyo, Japan, most notably architect of the 2020 Olympic Stadium. Aya, what do you do when you're not uh, being an architect? Uh, I'm a relatively tame person, actually. I enjoy reading. Cooking is a good uh, creative outlet for me. Uh, in the wintertime, skiing. I occasionally go bouldering. Um, but I am kind of a nerd, so I enjoy going to museums for the art and the architecture uh, and researching architecture in my spare time. What do you like to cook? Ooh, um... I mean, I picked up cooking when we did our semester in Rome, so Italian Ooh, cooking is fun. Mm, nice. um, enjoy Japanese food, thanks to my mom, and uh, yeah, any, anything new, really. It's just a chance to explore. Yeah. Well, and we like to ask our guests <coughs> something fond about the home they grew up in. So um, you grew up here in the Northwest, right? I did. Um, I actually have never moved to a different house. And then when I went to college, I was living somewhere different every year or every semester, which was a, kind of a big change from that. I don't have one specific memory necessarily, but uh, home has always been a very steady and consistent place for me. Um, it was a place to study and explore my interests. And uh, I guess we like to talk about safe spaces a lot. So home has always been that. Safe place. space for you. Yeah. Nice. Are there any new trends uh, within the architectural discipline? There are many trends within the architecture yeah. discipline. Uh, the the industry is always evolving. But I guess related to real estate a little bit, there has been a trend in the last 10 years or so of more architect developers uh, coming up. Uh, this job provides end-to-end -end control of the process. So architecture and developers are traditionally uh, very separate things. Obviously, mm -hmm. architects really focus on just the design aspect of it. Um, Whereas the developer will work more with contractors and, uh, I guess, do more of the business negotiations. Um, so with the rise of technology and BIM or building information modeling software, it becomes important for the mm. architect to try to branch out and have more control over the processes that way. Uh, it's interesting because I know as Brian and I look at, um, you know, kind of what's being built out there, new construction, I probably say maybe, maybe – Three or four years ago, you started to see traditional just builders start to incorporate more, more design versus yeah. just straight up building. And it, I'll you know mention names like uh, Quadrant and Dr. Horton, where they were pretty. You, you, I wouldn't say totally utilitarian, but they started to adopt some of the things that some of the more, um, I would say, architectural style. You know, where you right. actually put um, you know craftsman style finishes out there rather than just building a home for a home. And I would say that probably started maybe ten years ago. Feels like yeah. it. Feels like it. And I would assume some of the finishes are architectural choices, not just design. But like I'm seeing a trend using some stone on the front of some of these homes that looks like cinder block. It's not, but it's like dang. So, what do you think are the benefits of uh, of being an architect slash developer? So, besides obvious aesthetic benefits, uh, because of how the architect is trained, the site can often be optimized for sustainability and efficiently go into planning their future developments instead of actually putting up new constructions. Um, so architects are knowledgeable about things like building code, uh, the history of design, as well as contemporary and projecting future trends. So I think it's a win-win all the way around. So you're talking about you know, architect developer. Um, that That's kind of a new phrase to me. That's meaning actually doing the design and the build. Is that is that right? So there are actual design build companies, but I suppose you can think of an architect developer being in kind of the same vein as that. Because historically, isn't that uh, how this all evolved? I mean, I think... Uh, well, when you mention like Quadrant Homes and kind of those big developments that are going up, mm -hmm. uh, those constitute about 80% of, I guess, the at least residential uh, properties that are built. And those 80% that are done by developers actually don't involve an architect at all. Right. They're very uh, just kind of cookie cutter right. model homes that don't really need much 
Well, once once they get a design them. for five different types, that's right. it. They're yeah. putting those five and, and they'll reverse saying, them. Yeah, <laughs> there's ten <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a different elevation here. Right, but it's more. I would say more of the craft built homes. Uh, John Buckin, um, even though they're a little cookie cutter. Yeah. Uh, Murray Franklin, they I know they have an architect on staff, but it's just one, right? And they're building a lot of homes, and and they're probably not going to change styles because the buyers like that. So it it sounds to me like an architect's role is more in the commercial space, more more in the custom home space, stuff like that. Yeah. So um, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, as an emerging architect, what's something you're passionate about? Um, I In the last couple of years of school, I discovered I really like the kind of experiential or phenomenological side of architecture. Wait, say that again? Phenomenological. <laughs> phenomenological? Basically, it's uh, really putting yourself in a first-person perspective of designing. So when you enter a space, when you approach it, what's kind of the atmosphere, the vibe that you want within the space, rather than just uh, you know having the exterior view, that bird's eye view, and plan the kind of like general ways hmm. that architecture is conceived of. So it's, it's a more intimate uh, way of approaching. It must be interesting with stuff like Oculus 3D. You can kind of immerse yourself in a design. Did you get an opportunity to look at some of that or study some of that stuff? Uh, right as I was graduating, actually, there were a couple studios that were venturing into doing uh, VR studios and mm -hmm. getting into that realm. Um, the school likes to brag about how the first uh, rendering software was developed by a professor in the CS department, at, actually. Um, so they've started to kind of cross over between the two departments, um, but I had already decided that I kind of wanted to focus on something else, so I did not dapple into the VR studio. The more tactile but, stuff, yeah. 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 Um, but you were saying, and I sort of jumped it a little bit, but more of the immersive kind of design style? Yeah. Um, so that, that whole like experiential facet of it is something that should be taken into consideration regardless of any project that you do, right? You try to do the best job that you can with any kind of space. Right. Um, but for me, it manifests mostly when I uh, work on hospitality-geared projects, uh, so restaurants, hotels, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, where the user experience is really a key part of the client's business and for them to be able to sell whatever their product might mm -hmm. be. Um, so, yeah. Well, so you, you mentioned sustainability before in contemporary um, architecture. And I think, for me, it... it it actually, you can kind of walk in. A good example would be, what is the geodesic thing, the Amazon sphere that they have down there? The, uh, <laughs> it, you just have a feeling when you walk into something that's been designed with an environment in mind, right? Yep. So how is that playing into what it is you're looking to do? The idea of sustainability? Yes. Um, well, everyone has their own opinion about what sustainability is. It's a very trendy buzzword, has been for quite some time now. Um, Generally, in the U.S. at least, the average life expectancy of a new construction is 30 to 40 years, hmm. uh, which is not a very long time when you think about the history of some of the real cultural icons that can be found around the world. Um, but that has to do a lot with, again, the economy. If you decide to keep up buildings for a longer period of time, then architects don't really have jobs for new construction. They turn more towards restoration and renovation hmm. instead. Hmm. Um, and the last place I was working was uh, Tokyo at Kuma's office. Um, Tokyo is similar in that way. They generally stick to about 30 years before they tear down and uh, reconstruct a building in its place. Um, this does have to do, on the one hand, with building technology, which is changing. Obviously, a place like Japan has some of the best earthquake structure technology that we've mm. ever seen, mm -hmm. out of necessity more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but also the actual technology that's embedded within the walls, ways of optimizing how the building runs, um, that, kind of, that kind of thing, mechanical systems, et cetera. Um, so even as there are cities within the U.S. and worldwide that are pushing for densification of their urban areas just because it is a more sustainable way just to have people closer together, you're not traveling, expending as much energy that way, um, that... that does mean that buildings are going to be demolished as they're put up in those places because you want to stay kind of confined within this footprint instead. Um, but again, sustainability for the business side of architects is not always great. Um, actually, the office in Japan has a large population of Italians working there because mm. Itali Italy has the highest uh, per capita of architects. It's really? Something like one in 45 people. Kind of like real estate brokers here. 
<laughs> yeah. About one in 45 people in Italy are trained architects, which is terrible for a country that prides itself on its history, does not like right. to put up new constructions. Um, well, they're like, look, we built that. It's still standing. We're done. <laughs> right. Exactly. So everyone there ends up working in restoration or renovation instead. Yeah. So, so you said you studied in Italy also? First semester, yeah. Okay. So you were over there at Florence? Mm-hmm. Rome. Rome. Okay. Rome, thanks. All right, and that was part of your architecture school at Cornell, or yes, it was a mandatory. Mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's where you I learned to terrible. cook, right? Italian yeah. food yeah, and all that. Um, so, do you think the design is approached differently in Japan than the U.S.? It's hard to say since I was only in Japan in Tokyo for a couple months. Um, there is definitely a huge influence of um, international style and modernist movements, particularly in post-war architecture in Japan. Um, mm. But even so, this integration and uh, influence of Western design is still mediated by this really strong foundation of Japanese architecture embedded within you know, their cultural history, their religious history, et cetera. Um, at Kango Kuma's office, actually, the roof form of the building was really emphasized there, which I think is often overlooked in this kind of strictly modern movement, which has mm-hmm. kind of filtered its way through the U.S. as well, started mm-hmm. in Europe and then filtered over here. Um, but the there we worked a lot on kind of the roof form, this idea of a floating object over the landscape, and that's really kind of the highlighting uh, iconic moment in all of his projects. So it was nice to have a perspective where, hey, we don't really, it's not that we don't care about this, but this is the most important thing. You know, this is what we want attached with the firm's name and to be associated hmm. with it. So what is the most uh, valuable lesson you've learned thus far? Um, at my first internship, my boss really emphasized the importance of looking about 10 years ahead, anticipating trends not only within the architectural profession, but in how the needs of society will, ch- will change along with how humans interact with those spaces. Mm. Um, cultural institutions such as libraries are not obsolete yet, yet. but mm. they can no longer be conceived of and constructed in the same way as right. they were you know, 10, 20, 50 years ago. Uh, they have to reflect the changing needs of society and how research is conducted and how information is consumed. Mm. Um, Don't need bookshelves. <laughs> Data centers. Yeah. There's actually... Uh, I don't remember where this library went up, built within the last couple of years or so. Um, actually came under fire because they had books on the shelves for these like beautiful, beautiful tall shelves, like tens of feet high. And above maybe like 15 feet or so was just wallpaper. They didn't actually have books oh. on the shelves. So oh. it was a total farce in that sense. So if that's the trend for libraries, then I don't know if I can get behind that one. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, right. <laughs> teach their own. Yeah. Um, and I think another really good example is actually e-commerce. The traditional brick and mortar stores are dying and they aren't able to keep people coming into their shops because, you know, especially like in this area, we love talking about Amazon and how it's mm-hmm. dominated mm-hmm. The, the retail industry. Um, so in the, that, we don't really need brick and mortar stores anymore than we have to start looking towards warehouses for better or for worse. So we go from these really warm, inviting atmospheres to how can we make industrial chic like as inviting and as nice of a space for the workers that are oh, there as we can? Yeah. Hmm. Aya, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank that you was, for having uh, me. <laughs> very interesting. Remember, all of the segments of our show are available to watch on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about any of our guests, please subscribe. Join us after the break for some final thoughts and something fun to do. Not sure if now is the right time to sell? Worried you missed the market? The East Side Real Estate Team specializes in helping homeowners maximize their equity when selling. With our proven premier listing service, our clients have sold their homes for more money in less time than the competition. We know you have many choices when working with a real estate agent, but with the Eastside Real Estate Team, you get a team of highly qualified, experienced agents. From staging to deciding if your property is market ready for top dollar. If you're considering selling, call the Eastside Real Estate Team at 425-200-4093. Or check out our website at the Eastside Real Estate Team.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue.
Are you worried about an aging loved one who is isolated in their home? Or maybe they've just had a fall and they're not safe in their house. If you're searching for a safe place for them to live, you've probably been overwhelmed with all the choices. There are over 150 assisted living and memory care communities licensed in King County and over a thousand adult family homes. Oasis Senior Advisors has helped thousands of families across the country navigate this difficult time. And we have the compassion and understanding in getting to know your loved one and what they need. To learn more, check us out at oasisseniouradvisors.com. That's all one word, oasisseniouradvisors.com. Or call us at 425-526-7111. That's 425-526-7111. Oasis Senior Advisors, because the right place means everything. Wondering what's on next on Alternative Talk 1150? Check out 1150kknw.com. Well, welcome back to Real Talk on 1150 KKNW. Let's get right in to our final thoughts of the day. Brian, what do you got? I've got customer service. Okay. You know, Dan and I, one of the things that uh, we hang our hats on is delivering an excellent experience. You think about, we don't own the real estate we sell, so what do we sell? Uh, The experience. The experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yesterday, I had a call. I mentioned that listing that I sold, that we had multiple offers. Yeah. I had a call from a buyer who wanted to see the home. And I'm like, sure, I'd love to show it to you. You know, love to help. Yeah. And um, she said that her broker, who I will not name because I have a strict policy of never despairing the competition. Right. We wouldn't want to disparage them. Yeah. Refused. And they refused because there was, I don't know, so much activity or whatever. Timeline. And, anyway, yeah. she is now in contract buying this lovely home. And um, it's a win for everybody. Because we get hired to sell homes. We get, we get hired to find a home you want to buy or yeah. help the seller sell their home. Yeah. But it's all about the experience. And, you know, just talking about this uh, virus thing and people being scared. Oh, driving into the office today, I told my wife, it's like, I am not panicked over this virus. No. And she says, I'll put that on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love that. But uh, um Anyway, just thinking about what's going on right now, you don't have to leave your home. As Dan and I mentioned, we can do a virtual tour. We can mm-hmm. uh, walk you through on you know, FaceTime or one of the other apps. You don't have to leave the comfort of your home to buy your dream home. I got something, Brian. Um, just listed today in um, Renton near Fairwood. Yeah. $500,000. It is a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. It's got a giant master suite upstairs, hmm. little bonus loft, um, living room, family room, it's on a cul-de-sac, backs to King County Protected Grounds. It's going to be a hot one. So come see us yeah. between 1 and 4, Saturday and Sunday. We'll be open. Yeah. And uh, we're happy to write That's it up great. for you. Yeah. You know? So in the famous words of my friend, Angel Barna, wash your hands or die. <laughs> Love, <laughs> <Right>? mom. <laughs> <laughs> Love, mom. Love, <laughs> mom. Yeah. Yeah. Little note to my kids. Yeah. So Dan, what's happening that's fun this uh Well weekend? get out. Get outside. Go for a hike. Go for a walk. You can uh do a tour of the Greenbelt. So you can join a park ranger for a free guided tour of the Lake Hills Greenbelt. And uh you'll see restoration sites, tour a cedar forest, uh learn about local wildlife. Uh the walks are free. They meet at the uh, Lake Hills Greenbelt Ranger Station every Saturday between two PM. Walks are uh fun for the whole family and all, all ages. Uh, if you don't want to be there at two o'clock, grab your smartphone. You can Google just about anything and say, what's that, you know, and uh, have a nature walk on your own. <laughs> There's lots of trails. I, last week I went for a drive. I got to say, Chuck Nut Drive, if you've it's not gorgeous. done it, it's an awesome drive on a sunny day. Go hit it. Grab some oysters. Uh, Taylor to, Shellfish Farm right yeah, there. It's right there in the crook and you'll have a, a blast. So, um, yeah, bring us home, Brian. So that concludes our show for the week. I especially want to thank our guests, Angel and Aya for taking the time to speak with us today. I learned a lot. I like that. Um, Thank you all for listening. And before we go, in the words of Warren Buffett, look at market fluctuations as your friend rather than your enemy. Profit from folly rather than participate in it. Hey, buy stock. They're having a sale. They're having a sale. Thanks for listening, everyone.